This is the house on Simon Lamb Street, where Gilbert Alamia, a.k.a. Mr. Program, met a cruel end. Alamia would go there to hang out and maybe have a few drinks, but tensions had been brewing. And this morning, we spoke to Mr. Program's father, who told us that his son was too trusting. I always talk to him. The biggest, I, only day before yesterday, me and he talked right here. And I tell him, I don't know why you don't move on him. People are like, I don't know. But he just like humble himself with everybody. Like he trusts everybody. I know what you can't trust a friend. I like where the music self friends kills friends. I don't know why you don't do that to the boy. He may tell me, he may hold. He said that then he charged on was seventy dollars where he don't know, know about where he didn't say he didn't stay there. But he only go to go drink and sometimes he get drunk and you know, he stay there. So then he charged on was for all go he stay there. Alamia's family will remember him fondly, but they say his drinking was his downfall. He just got to live there like a week or two. He said someone of the guy there where he hang with, rent him a room back there. I just feel numb. I feel numb. I don't know what to say. He know me a sweet, loving person. Always give and, you know. And he had any problems, I think, but I think the drinking that we mess up on. You know, when you get drunk, you go and you must get in some problem with the people there where you live. And then they hurt her. He always giving. How should you hurt someone who always help? That sometimes he make the family upset because he give them more than he give us. He show them attention more than he show us. But with all that, we still love him. So we feel it very much. We feel it a whole lot. For see, our number one superstar left us now. Left us just like that. And he had a lot of music coming, a lot of mu- videos coming. Coming out of challenging circumstances, Program himself was aware of the tightrope he walked between making it and not making it out alive, as he told us in 2009. I don't know how we grew up ghetto you, you know. My, my father sells no poems. My mom ten kids, live for them and basically we grow up for We know that what we have no food or leave it or nothing. We know ending of the day, we will always say the system, the system, but you know, I, I, tie, I get tired of blaming the system and you know, regardless of whoever fought and whoever have their part to play, I figure I have mine still. So I push my music how I believe I could do it. And you know, the feedback is really nice and we get there. So I guess for now, go back, I just push the music now until the day we rest. And it's that clarity of purpose and that push which led to his greatest hit, C.I. Rise, a track that's already becoming the anthem of his legacy. Its lyrics now seem eerily prophetic. C.I. Rise was like a life experience for him. Something he went through, something that he was visualizing from the very start. The message is clear. He said, see me fall and die. It's, it's clear. Nobody wants to see nobody rise. And that's what it looked like. It looked like if you're fighting to come up, somebody's going to cut you down. But while he may have been cut down, his music and its message will endure. And perhaps even research. How, how does that feel now to know that he wrote those words and then this is it? Well, that make I know that the music will live forever and ever, ever till thy kingdom come. Cherise Halso, 7 News. Nobody for them no want to see I rise. Nobody for them want to see me fall and die. But you're not see me, not see me, not see me, not see me. Cut it up and die. Nobody for them no want to see I rise. Nobody for them want to see me fall and die. Fall and die.